What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well and staying safe. Hopefully, you had a good day today. My day ended on a little hectic note. We had an internet outage earlier, but I did get that resolved. Called the service company and finally got through to someone. And here we are. Welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Wednesday, June 21st, 2023. India today has added another 92 COVID cases. Their active case load has now dipped to 1,786, and their total deaths are at 531,898. And taking a look here, the 92 cases, I don't believe it because you have to remember, India has a billion people, so the real number, we know at-home tests don't get reported. We know some people are not getting tested. It's a problem in all countries of the world. So the real number is probably likely higher, but I think pretty soon we will come to the stage where we'll be able to not open our videos with India, but more so put the India report uh, right when we get to the international update because really India is not in the alarming phase anymore. They're not rapidly going up. They're continuing to drop like we've been seeing, but who knows at some time or another, they will probably eventually have another wave when that will be. Who knows? All right, moving on to this. This is something that I found to be relatively interesting. It was tweeted out by Pedro Larez, and this is in reference to the rapid test. As you can see here in this picture, there are six different rabbit tests from four different brands within a two-hour time period. And that is very important. It says within a two-hour time period and how the results were quite diverse. It reinforces that a negative rat doesn't mean a person isn't infected. Act accordingly. Let's open this up. Look at this. Here's test A. You can see the control was, uh, you know, pretty bright line. That's where both. Then you come to the next one, which seems to be from Abbott. Look at that. Negative. Then you come to another one. Positive. But still, there's a line. Then you come to another one. Negative. And then here's another one. Negative. Then here's one that's positive, but with a faint line. Again, six different tests within a two-hour period from four different companies. This is why I always say, even though you tested negative with the first test, make sure you test again a day later or whenever. Test again. If you are showing symptoms and you are feeling sick, test multiple times because this right here shows you. You can take multiple tests and you can get multiple different results. So this is really interesting to see. I did tweet and re I did retweet this um, thread. Check it out. It's on my uh, Twitter at COVID Data Report. All right, moving on to this. This is relatively interesting. So on June nineteenth, the COVID emergency in New York City expired. Okay, that was on June nineteenth. Today is June twenty first. So being yesterday, being Tuesday, which was the 20th, Mayor Eric Adams of New York City announced plans to extend New York City's state of emergency. There's a couple of reasons for this. One, ridership on the city subways, they're still pre-pandemic levels. Two, the unemployment rate in New York City is still above the national average. And three, the office the number of people, you know, in the offices, read this. It says, additionally, his office notes that the city's office occupancy rate is approximately 48% of pre-pandemic rates. So people are still not back at the office. You know what that's telling me? There's a lot of people like you, you and I, who still take this serious, who still do not want to participate in all of the normal activities, Maybe some have, some don't. And you know what? Maybe a lot of people like working from home. Maybe they feel safer working from home. Or maybe it's another reason. The point being made is this is still impacting our daily lives. And uh, Eric Adams still sees that as a problem. And unlike the national level, New York City is still in the COVID emergency. 
it was out for just a little under 12 to 18 hours, but quickly yesterday he said, nope, extended. So the COVID pandemic emergency is going to continue in New York City. All right, now we can move on to monkeypox. We do have some monkeypox today news, and that is in St. Louis County. They have reported their first case of monkeypox for 2023 and we will be looking at wastewater not necessarily today it's too soon to see but uh we'll be looking at various wastewater sites and st louis is going to be one of them you know the site that i'm talking about the one where we used the wastewater scan data and we'll be able to see what's being detected there we'll see if it picks up on there being a monkeypox case. All right, Walgreens did update this week. The national positivity was 24.8%. The prior week was 22.8%. That's a difference of up 2%. But again, if you remember from yesterday, I did say that testing is down across the country. 1,961 tests versus 2,286 tests. Let's take a look at a couple states, shall we? Louisiana this week is 9.1%. Last week was 8.3%. That's a difference of up 0.8%. 11 tests versus 12 tests. And when we come down, take a look at South Carolina. Uh, positivity actually dropped with testing down 11.5% versus 15.6%. And that's a 4.1% drop. 26 tests versus 32 tests. And let's take a look at Kentucky. 15.4% this week. They did not report last week, which ultimately resulted in a 15.4% increase. And testing versus their previous time of reporting is 13 versus 12. Taking a look at the biometrics here, or biobot analytics, I should say. And uh, you can see here the Northeast is rising. The rest of the country is flat or dropping with... The Great Lakes and the Midwest showing signs that they may start rising soon. We have nothing to report on today in uh, COVID pandemic history. Taking a look at the latest uh, wastewater sites from the CDC. And here's the percents for you. New sites, that's 131 of them. 0% to 19% wastewater detected. That's at 729 sites right now. 20% to 39%. COVID wastewater detected. That's at 350 sites right now. 40% to 59% COVID detected. That's at 105 sites. 60 to 79% COVID detected. That's at 23 sites. 80% to 100% is just only at four sites right now. Two in New York, uh, one being in Oklahoma, and one in Texas. Those are the two, uh, the four areas right now that do have the high wastewater sites taking a look here at the uh, cdc nowcast we hope to get a new update from this on friday xbb15 39.9 percent and disclaimer these numbers are way old at this point it's wednesday of this week we haven't had an update since the start of this month so it's very likely these numbers are completely changed and they will change on Friday, hopefully. XBB 116 is at 18.2 percent. XBB 191 is at 12.5 percent. XBB 116.1 and XBB 192 is at 8.4 percent. XBB 2.3 is at 6 percent. XBB is at 3 percent. XBB 151 is at 1.6 percent. Then you have a bunch of variants that are below 1 percent and not shown here, but is Coming up in the United States is the new FU variant. There are low levels of it being detected by some people who are reporting on it on Twitter. They're saying it is starting to show up in low numbers in the U.S. caseload. Uh, taking a look at the latest ER visits, and you can see here nothing has changed for that. D.C. and Delaware are the two places that are currently seeing rises for that. The rest of the country is either stable or dropping which is good to see all right let's take a look at a few wastewater sites shall we and i wanted to show you st louis i mentioned it earlier st louis it does not look to be uh listed on this site but let's just go to indiana we'll go to a couple different places and you can see here for monkey pox in indiana none is being detected at this site this is the dillman road wastewater treatment plant and you can see here, this one is for COVID. And ruh -roh, look what's going on here. COVID is just going straight up. 
That is not good to see. How about influenza? Do they have any influenza? No, none being detected at this time. RSV, none being detected. HMV, none being detected. Monkeypox, not being detected. And there are low levels of the norovirus being detected at this time. Let's go back to the search results. And we can see here, we'll go to a couple more sites. Uh, let's go, how about we go down to Alabama? What's going on in the Birmingham area? Let's click on this one, Village Creek Water Facility. Let's see what's going on here. And you can see monkeypox, nothing being detected. COVID is starting to rise in this Birmingham area. As you can see here, from the 13th through the 17th, they experienced a rise in COVID. How about influenza? None being detected at this time. RSV, none being detected. HMV, nothing being detected. Then we skip over to norovirus, and not good. Norovirus is now on the rise in this region. Let's go back. We're going to do one more. And that one more place that we will do is going to be Utah. We haven't done Utah in a while. What's going on near Salt Lake City? Let's see here. So monkeypox, none being detected. Coronavirus, they did experience a rise, and now it is starting to drop. As we uh, continue on here, influenza, none being detected. RSV, none being detected. HMV, very low levels of that being detected at this time. How about norovirus? Uh, norovirus is a bit higher than we've been seeing in some of the other sites, but it does look like it is showing a drop from June 14th through to the 16th. All right, moving on now to New Jersey. We will, reminder, we will tomorrow have our Hop Bub World weekly forecast from their data. We're going to go through their data tomorrow and see what the uh, COVID forecast looks like through much of the country, maybe including your community. New Jersey has 222 hospitalizations, nine people on a ventilator, and in the ICU, uh, there's 21 people in the ICU and taking a look at number of hospitals reporting we do note that today 69 out of 70 are reporting so just one hospital did not report come on report I want to see 70 out of 70 in tomorrow's update moving across the Delaware River into Pennsylvania and taking a look at Philadelphia there were 778 EMS incidents yesterday in Philadelphia, so that is higher. That's getting closer to that 800 level, which I do not like to see 800. Let's see what's going on in Montgomery County right now, which is just west of Philadelphia. And we can see we do have a few calls going on. Not terribly busy at the moment. Let's take a look at Chester County, which is borderline with uh, Montgomery County. It's just to the southwest of it. And we can see here Chester County, uh, it's 7 o'clock in the evening. We're a little late today. Uh, for this late, that's quite a few calls for this late. And I do see some that say respiratory difficulty. see some that say heart problems, strokes, sickle seizures, hypertension. Yeah, it's not a good evening for Chester County. They're busy at the moment. Taking a look at New York State, 313 new cases reported. Test positivity is 4%. The seven-day average is 3.8%. Moving on now to this. I do want to show you two things with the New York State hospitalization situation. First off, when we take a look at the actual hospitalizations, yes, I'm surprised. Pencil me in surprise. You should be surprised too. It's a Wednesday. So usually the first update for a new week would be on Tuesday, but because of the holiday weekend, it fell on a Wednesday. And look at this. Hospitalizations actually dropped on the um, statewide level. We go to New York City, they're a little bit higher than they were on the last update, which that is to be expected. But then we come over to this. Take a look at admissions. Over the last several weeks, admissions have been trending higher. Now, that's kind of interesting. You might be thinking, well, wait a second, if admissions are trending higher, how come hospitalizations are actually trending lower? That's something I am questioning, and it's puzzling me myself. Let's go back to the statewide level. If you go back to the statewide level, and we do want to click on uh, admissions. Hang on here. We do want to click on admissions for the statewide level. And we can see here, yes, they are ever so slightly going up. Not terribly, but 
again, it's it's just question. It's just puzzling to see that emissions, when we go back to New York City, where there is a significant rise in emissions right now, we're not seeing the rapid rise in hospitalization. So we'll just have to see what happens in the coming days and weeks and see if that actually leads to something. All right, finally, we come to Texas. Texas today reported 3,194 new cases. That's over 1,000 less than last week. And when we come down here to deaths, 20 versus 38, that's down by 18. Hospitalizations, just 498, that's down by 49. So, yes, things continue to improve in Texas at this time. Real quickly, taking a look at some international data, I'm going to refresh this to make sure that it is most up-to-date. Around the world, cases are down 33%. Deaths are down 39%. We do see some places of concern. First off, South Korea, cases down 20%. Deaths are down 35%. Then we come into where it's turning into winter now. Here in the United States, it's the first day of summer. In Brazil, they have just entered winter. And because of that, their cases are now up 24%. Their deaths are up 196%. We're going to be doing some research, and I hope in tomorrow's video we're going to do something talking about. Maybe we'll find a news story or something that says what's going on in Brazil. 320 deaths versus 108. That's a significant increase that is relatively concerning at this time. Guatemala, 15% increase in cases that deaths are down 50 percent one versus two then bolivia is seeing cases go up by 45 percent just one death reported this week vietnam cases down 32 percent they're not reporting any deaths indonesia cases are down 29 percent and deaths are down 31 percent and we'll just do one more and end it on that chile cases are up six percent and they're not reporting any deaths today Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's pandemic update. We will have another pandemic update again tomorrow, plus the Hubbub World uh, forecast with their, you know, with their COVID data and, and the other viruses that they do as well. That will probably be out earlier in the day, maybe around uh, 1 o'clock, 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And then the pandemic update will be out tomorrow evening. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, Subscribe to my channel down below. I will see you all again next time. But until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone. Test negative. Have a great evening.